This is Twit. So this new liquid glass, it's funny how uh, the reactions have been all over the place. Max Stories had an article calling it, what, uh, opinionated design. That was one of the lines. I mean, they're, they're, that was like a summation of, of a bunch of uh, the quick takes on yeah. afterward. Well, now after the fact, you guys have had some time to think about it. Most of you have probably installed the developer preview i haven't but uh yeah. you guys live on the edge what do you sure. think i you know first off it's a it's a new design it's always hard to judge i i'm trying to not rush in because it, it's human nature to reject anything that's new right and that doesn't mean that every new design is good it, do, it really doesn't but it does mean that I am less inclined to listen to people who see something and immediately say, oh, that's terrible, or who have been complaining about Apple's design trends for a while and say, see, this is it, right. It's like, I don't think that tells us anything. I think you need to kind of consider and um, consider that it's new and that all of us have to kind of like drink it in and 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 sleep on it a little bit and, and spend some time with it. And so, you know, I, I think it, is ambitious i think it's interesting i think they're kind of showing off their their gpu power that they can do some like some of this stuff i think some of it is you know i i think it's pretty sometimes and ugly sometimes and i have a real question about like what they're going to ship but i'll tell you if you've only judged it based on the mac os beta it looks really bad on mac os right oh, now interesting. on it's, an yeah. iphone it looks really good so i i mean it is it's a work in progress in a way and i wonder how they'll react or the, how they'll react to the reaction to it but um i do think it needed a, they needed a new design that was considered across all their devices they really have been patching designs and importing one design language into another device that was based on a completely different design for quite a while now and they really kind of needed a reset um i will expect that it'll be painful for a little while but in the end I, I'm a, I'm optimistic about it, but like I mean, it is it is a fresh coat of paint. That's what it's, it is. I, to me, it seems more than a fresh coat of paint. Like it's a, it really everything's going to look a lot different. Yes, it feels very Apple like. That was the my reaction to it, especially on. So I I did it on iOS first, then iPad OS, then Mac OS, and on i iPhone and iPad OS, it it just again it felt very Apple like, and, and the consistency was was nice to to Jason Snell's point, you know. And then when I installed it on Mac OS, then I started getting a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like, Ooh, this is a <laughs> lot different. I was like, this this is this is um I'm feeling a little. I I, I felt the reaction that that Jason <laughs> mentioned. Like, okay, I'm now I'm getting a little uncomfortable. I'm trying to I, I'm trying to give this the benefit of the doubt, but I'm I'm still getting used to it. There, it feels the most different on on a mac i think than it does on the Bloom, others bloomberg managed to get a think piece out of two data points that and uh, the fact that they have skeuomorphic icons in the airbnb app <laughs> to to write an entire uh, piece called big tech is dealing flat design a death blow skeuomorphism is back I mean, to a point, I mean, I, it's, it is, I mean, because it's trying to ape glass, it is a little skeuomorphic, although not like super skeuomorphic where everything is. You don't have is green a, a beige icon or velvet but, or anything. Yeah. No, no, nothing like that. But I would say, yeah, this is the, the to your point about it being a, a, not a fresh coat of pay, what I would say is I feel like something like iOS 7, when they really redesigned it, was functionally a very different way of interacting with the iPhone in a lot of areas. And this doesn't feel like that to me. Uh, it, it, it feels using an iphone or an ipad like i've been using my ipad i installed this on my ipad that i use all day and i had another ipad waiting just in case i it was a disaster it wasn't it works really well but it also other it looks different it doesn't feel that different and and so it's not as disruptive i think to uh, a user as some previous redesigns have been it's more like a visual refresh than anything there's more animations there's a different look but it doesn't like remap how you view notifications or something like they all still pretty much are a bubble that <laughs> is in the lock screen and like it's not that different look That's at this though this is uh, this is an airbnb icon <laughs> from austin Carr's article in bloomberg that is vivid that is not skeuomorphism. Sure. That that makes me hungry. And Apple's is, not doing that, which is so we've yeah. got two different kind of views of Very what the future of, of yeah. UI design might be. Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely going to be um, a work in progress until it ships. And in some ways, probably a work in progress for the next few years, because there's just a lot they can do with this. And they're, they're, the devil is in the details. And 
anytime you introduce transparency, uh, you're opening up the possibility of stuff being extremely hard to read and you have to kind of balance the cool transparency with just being able to read the labels. Yeah. And I, I expect it to get better um, before the fall. But iOS 7 also kind of led to additional iterations and the updates that followed uh, yeah. using that as the foundation. And I would expect something similar to happen here. Accessibility was the first thing that got called out, you know, because of the the clear the clearness of the the um, notifications. Then, depending on what your background is, they can be difficult to read. You can turn them off. Uh, you you can go into accessibility and and uh, make them so that they are easier to read. That'll be the uh, test. How many people? who don't have accessibility issues decide to go back to the to old style. Off. That's exactly it. Because accessibility, I think it's great, and Apple has a commitment to it. And in some of their um, sessions this week, they the designers said, you know, we've designed this with some different looks based on your accessibility settings. And there's different ways you can reduce animation, you can reduce transparency. There's lots of things you can do, and that they've designed this with the accessibility settings in mind. So it's not an afterthought. It really is sort of like they want it to be able to scale. And my friend, uh, Shelly Brisbane, who writes about a lot of accessibility stuff, said back in iOS 7, there really weren't as robust a set of accessibility mm. settings as there are now. And so th it is something that like, if, if you're really worried about it, there are probably going to be features under accessibility to change what the design looks like. There's a good argument to be made about like, why is that under accessibility uh, instead of just saying these are design settings, but, um, but it's fine wherever it is. All, all of us can probably take advantage of one or two accessibility settings. So I think that that's, I, I think it's fine. I think the question is exactly what you said, Leo, which is, does everybody have to turn on those settings or does almost nobody have to turn on those settings? And in between those two, there's a, a spectrum. And I think that the more people have to resort to the accessibility settings, the the more of a failure the design is, right? They want it to be something that most people will love as is. And if you don't love it, there's a setting, which is great. But if everybody is rushing to turn on, you know, opacity in glass, then they failed. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.